Hey everyone, how can you level up your Excel game for 2022? Well, today we're gonna to go over five skills that are requirements for any data analyst or Excel user in general. And since this is YouTube, there's also gonna be a bonus skill at the end that will make your work life easier. Let's get started. Sum if or count if. This is a very easy function that most people don't know how to use. And in the example I have right here, I have a few transactions of different things I sold in the quantity. And on the right hand side, the count if is demonstrating how this works. So on the count if right here, I'm curious how many times Apple shows up on the um, data on the left hand side. And it's showing two right there. And that's where it's counting Apple is listed twice in here. So it's a real easy way to show what's in there. And then if I'm curious about the sum if, it does almost the same thing, but now it's going to add those two numbers in the quantity sold. So it's gonna add the nine and the 10, and that's where I'm gonna see 19 on the side. And if you really wanna take your game up to the next level, where I have Apple listed in the F column there, you can actually make that a dropdown of distinct values. So therefore it's dynamically always showing you all the values. And then this becomes effectively a reporting mechanism to show how many times the value's in there or how many times perhaps you sold something or what the inventory is. So sum if and count if, powerful tools for the data analyst, especially when you hand this file off to someone else. Number four, if error. So this is a way that, you know, errors are very common in spreadsheets and it doesn't necessarily mean that you made a mistake, but perhaps maybe a value in one table is expecting a value in another one, which legitimately is not there, but there's nothing worse than seeing all these ugly error messages all throughout a spreadsheet. So if error allows you to have a better presentation letter by actually dealing with that error and present up some language of letting someone understand why they see an error there. When people see these pound and these error messages, all it tells them is that this is a sloppy spreadsheet and they, therefore they really lose confidence in it. By using the if error function, it allows you now to assign values that let people understand that what they should do when they see that or how that, what that error means to them. So definitely use if error for a pre, when you want to uh, have a professional spreadsheet. Number three, we, we love them and hate them, but you can't get away from pivot tables. Anyone that wants to do data analytics in Excel, you have to become proficient in pivot tables. And for people that don't use it very often, simply it's gonna have a large data set like this with dates, invoices, and amounts, and what how I wanna present them to someone. You wouldn't wanna give a list like this to your vice president and let them figure out how well you did that year or for several years. Instead, pivot tables allow you to start summarizing data like here. I broke it down by month and then put the different values in which year it is above. So really kind of learn how to play with all the different elements within pivot tables, because it can be a powerful tool that will allow you to summarize data that helps your, I guess, directors, vice presidents know what's going on in your business. And really when we talk about pivot tables and presentation, you can't get away from slicers. And this is an element that not many people know. Pivot tables right now offer the ability to filter data, but the base filters in there are very ugly and it's not always easy to see what all the values are. Or in terms, slicers effectively is a filter. Like right here, I'm showing a very simple pivot table where I just show the quantity sold. And then the slicer is what I see on the right in the blue box. So I can pick apple, lemon, or orange, or any subset of those. And then the value in the pivot table is gonna change dynamically when I change that. It's a really great way and a powerful way to turn a pivot table into effectively a tool to, for someone to easily change the values based on the inputs of what they want to see. Slicers are a critical component of that. And anyone that uses pivot tables, you gotta know how to use slicers as well. Finally, number one, conditional formatting. You know, it's great when someone puts up a spreadsheet, or actually it's not great. I've been in meetings where people put up a spreadsheet with all these rows and columns, and there's all this ridiculous amount of data, and then they start pointing out what's important. You know, the presentation layer is extremely important element you need to do as an Excel professional. Conditional formatting allows you to put rules in place on your data. So therefore people's eyes are drawn to what's important to them. Perhaps it's business rules that you made determination ahead of time. So people know what to look like. Here's a very simple sheet where I show all the sales for each sales team member. And I just put, show me the top two salespeople for the month. And it pointed out that Olivia and James had the highest two amounts on here. 
The wizard has some basic ones, top two, top 10%, greater than average, lower than average, but you really can get into doing complex formulas that really help people not only see the data, but visualize what's important to them and what's important to the organization. So it's not just about creating a great spreadsheet with fancy formulas. It's about turning the data into information and conditional formatting is something that will help you get there. And finally, I promised you a bonus one, and I think this applies to almost anyone in the workforce. Whatever your boss values, your boss may care about formatting, summary of the data, how the data order is, make sure you freeze the top row or certain columns or who knows what it is, but learn what your boss values. You'll start to see that if you give your boss a spreadsheet and then it takes them 30 minutes to get it looking right before maybe they pass it on to someone else, learn what they're doing and do it for them. They'll start to appreciate that and that will just make you look that much better in their eyes. And you know, this really isn't just about Excel. This is about work advice in general. Always understand what your boss values and then try to mimic that. Whether you would necessarily agree with it or not, that doesn't matter. It's what they want. So really focusing on what your boss wants is gonna make you more of an Excel professional. Anyway guys, end of the video. If you're still here, thank you very much. I wish you the best in your 2022 Excel adventures. If you'd like to see anything else, please comment down below, but I definitely appreciate all the support that you and everyone else gives this channel, and I hope you have a great day.